Hey guys, how's it going? We are on a road trip to go pick up a vehicle of sorts. It's a little different than my norm. And uh, I think I broke the piggy bank on this one. Need some love, so we'll throw that in the video too. But first of all, we have to go get it. Yep. And uh, that might be a, a little bit of an issue on itself. So without further ado, let's go make ourselves a video. Hey guys, so this is it. It's been sitting here for a little while. The lift cylinders for the outriggers were taken off to go get rebuilt, and that never happened. I guess they tried taking them apart and couldn't get them apart. And it's kind of, take it as it is. But it does need some love. It's got a plow blade that goes in the bucket. Our thought was to try to get the plow on my trailer now, and then have a company come over and move the machine because it's a little too heavy for <laughs> for my trailer. I think it could go on the trailer. Sir. It's only double. It's a uh, they weigh 14,000 pounds and the trailer is rated to put seven on it. Okay, let's just it's close. It close. Yeah, we put two wheels on it. It's got a thumb for the bucket, which is good. The tires are pretty beat. I think it's got 6,000, 6,600 hours on it something like that oh, the sun's getting you and that's what those brackets are on the front they had a plow blade hanging off of those i think that was for they had horses and i think hay was getting into the radiator so that's what that screen is over the front of that All right, well you say we fire it up, see what it does, if it'll fire up. I don't think we have to do anything. It's warm enough, we shouldn't have to glow it. If it has glow plugs. See what we get. It starts nice. It's up high enough. Looks like they're reaping from those. The curl for the bucket.
out to the end. Okay. That's uh, that's that piston that looks like it's leaking. It's on that foot pedal. All right. Also, it's the lock or um, the lock is over on that side too. For to hold the boom back, just like on the Terramite. Ah, okay. Some air in the line. <laughs> well, that that not have the outriggers. back in the lock. I bring the RPMs up too. Why does it look like the cylinder's all the way in though? Let's give her some ripums. Man, is a little bit more knowledgeable than I am. <laughs> I'm used to a Terramite, which is about 10% of that tractor. <laughs> this doesn't have the balls to get. I wonder if there's a lockout for that, that it doesn't allow it to come all the way up.
would think it would just be on that lever though, that when you hit the foot pedal for the latch, that it would release whatever would lock it from coming all the way up. Try putting some fluid in it, see if that'll help. Seems like everything else operates though, just that doesn't have the snot to pull itself back. Let's try putting some fluid in it, see if that helps it. My only guess, this so happen to have. Oh, we got half a bucket anyway. Let's so throw that in there, see what it does. I think we got about four gallons to work with. That might be enough. I would think so. It's starting to show up a little bit on that gauge, I think. Yeah? Yeah. I think it holds like 30, Ugh. some ridiculous amount. <laughs> Six pails of uh... 10 hours later. <laughs> we'll see you guys in a little while. So we were back a week later because I was a dummy and I didn't know how to latch it. I looked on YouTube and there is a way at the very last second as you are retracting the boom, you push the stick forward again and it will continue with momentum to latch into the travel mode. So we're gonna go jack the outriggers back up and just make sure it goes down the road okay through the gears and then we are owners of it. Still have to get the plow onto the trailer that's behind us, so we'll go film that. Well, just look at that. All right, so now we gotta get those tied up, probably to the each other. Maybe we'll tie it to the, the backhoe arm at first, and then uh, once they're both up, we can ratchet strap them both together. Hopefully the glass isn't going to be in the way. Let's see how well this goes for us. Yeah, I'm good. Got it. Got it. Yep. <laughs> 
Did you back it off a little? Yeah. Okay. It's only heavy the first time. I wouldn't stand under it, but all set. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's get that other one. <laughs> That's like one big mouse trap. Okay. Don't jiggle it around too much. Don't want to upset the apple cart. Right, I know. This one's even a cheaper strap than the other one. I need to go around that, don't I? Yeah. I like to use the Harbor Freight ones the best <laughs> for situations. Nothing against Harbor Freight. <laughs> All right, so we get a, a decent one going across the both of them. Oh, you're going to get it now. Right? That should be. That worked out with crappy. Yeah, any puller is going to suck in the teeth though. I guess got it. One part of it we have to go get, it's kind of swampy over here, hopefully it's not too swampy, is get to the plow blade. It's definitely wet that direction, hopefully. If ground kind of froze last night too. And she's iffy. Look at that standing water right there. We gotta hook onto this with the loader and set it on the trailer. Probably wrap a chain right around here. Alright, let's go fire the tractor up. Gonna warm up and come in here and see if we can get this out of here. Alright, give her a cold start. Neutral. Where did you break is off? Oh, it's got glow plugs. Or timer for glow plugs. What's that say? Alternator and what's the one to the left? Oil. So we get. Oh boy. Go, 
kind of What's it in a four wheel? Any idea? Come on, one of you know. What's that pedal do? <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe it's always in four wheel. She's all wheel drive. We'll see what happens. We got a backhoe to get us out, right? Swimming hole. Destruction. Do you feel safe with that? Then I'm good.
Well, that sure takes up a little bit more room than a car does. <laughs> Good thing for a big garage door, right? So I think we'll go over it now. We'll get a, I guess, a shopping list of what we need and a little bit better assessment of all the, you know, functions and lights and gauges and all that kind of stuff. They're good, kind of hard to find right now as far as in my area. Everybody wants a machine and I have become responsible for taking care of plowing a bunch of snow for a property. And I was going to get a plow truck, but this seemed like much more fun. <laughs> so we grabbed this and this came with the plow that you saw that has to get put on. We, we do not have brackets for it that made it up to the bucket. They got lost somewhere and it has forks like fork truck forks that hang off the bucket too. I got those also. So I can kind of use it in a couple of different ways. This is a, a 95 and it's a super L. I think this is the largest of the 580 series. And I think the super L gives you a 90 horse turbo diesel where I think the other ones were 70. It does look like a bunch of the cylinders do leak. The two are already been removed from the rear for the outriggers. I have them, but they're going to need some love. I'm probably going to drop those off because they have some major uh, nicks out of the piston part of it. And I think they could possibly repair those compared to uh, just trying to put seals in it and saying, okay, <laughs> let's go for it, which I would have tried to do. And the, even their just a repair kits are fairly expensive. I think they're a couple hundred bucks a piece just for the seals. Front tires look like they've uh, pretty much used up any value to them. They're almost straight across in the middle right there. The backs, we're going to leave the backs alone, but I may at some point try to get some front ones. Somebody added a weight to the front of it. This isn't stock, so it's got like another 900 pounds of weight hanging off the front of it. I guess he didn't like when you were driving it down the road, it had a lot of bounce in the front, so he wanted to add a little bit of weight to it. You say we uh we want to look in the cab or pop the hood or what would you like to do no lock i think we just lift right up yeah there you go it's sat for a while i would suspect to see some mice or something around in it somewhere and i believe it's a cummins four cylinder i think it's the same as like the six cylinder truck engines with two cylinders cut off like a cummins 12 valve so this will be a Cummins 8 valve, <laughs> two per cylinder. Fairly simple, but again, it is a turbo though, which I believe is on the other side. It doesn't look terrible. I don't see anything much stuff leaking out of it. Yeah, right there. Right under there. Can you see it? Oh. I'd never owned anything this big or even operated anything this big, so it's all new to me. What you're going to learn sometime, right? peak on the other side. Yeah, I have a little Terramite backhoe, which is like a two-wheel drive, 20 horsepower gas engine. It, it does good for what it is, but it's, it, it's not this. It's like somebody put a starter on it at some point. Hardware looks a little funky on the alternator mount. That doesn't look like it would be stock, does it? As long as it works. Battery sound a little low when it's firing up. Maybe we'll pop the cover off of the batteries and get a check on them. Again, it's, it's sat for a while. I think it's running, you know, probably four or five months it was sitting there. Okay, fired up pretty good. All the glass looks good on the cab. I don't see it missing any glass. A little bit of Bondo or something happening here. What are some rot? Smells like mice on the inside. Yeah, you know, the glass looks decent. Yeah, let's go hop up in the cab, take a peek inside there. It's got some rust happening around the cab. Doesn't look terrible though. It's not like a car where it has to look pretty. <laughs> you could fix whatever there is. The headline looks kind of weird. I thought it was, I don't know, mold or something, all that white that was on there. But I think it's just the fabric came off and that was, is what's underneath it. It does smell like mouse piss though. So I think there was a, a family living up in there. 
<laughs> even set a, set of roll uh, paper towels there that uh, have some chop marks on it. So somebody's been living in it. A couple of grills. That's probably the grill for the the uh, register for the the top, maybe for the heat, sitting on the floor, and a bunch of the hardware pins and stuff, brackets from the hydraulic cylinders that were in the back. I don't know if we have to have it powered up to for everything, or can we just turn the key on for the lights and stuff? I don't know what does what. That's the whack, right? <laughs> what else we got? I think if it had AC, it would be the controls for the AC. Yeah, there's a blower. That, it's spitting, it's spitting stuff out. Yeah, there's a mouse nest up inside there. And I guess that if it had AC, it would probably be a, a knob punch for this one. I don't, know, I don't know what this one does, but it doesn't move. Maybe that's the heat. It doesn't move. I'm going to leave that alone. Fan speed. And yeah, I didn't see an AC compressor up there, so I don't know what that is. I think they probably would have punched a hole here for, for AC. Maybe these both are. Oh, this was wiper, wasn't it? One of them was. That one. Alright. And what we got down below here. It's like headlights and whatnot. Yeah. That one turned front lights on. I would think high beam like low beam maybe. And you would think there'd be some on the rear too, right? Maybe we'll just flick them all on. We'll see what's on outside. Only one of them lights up. Then we got a couple over here. I don't know what that one does. I think this would be four wheel drive. No, that's four ways. And yeah, what's that one? Left and right directional. And none of those light up. And I don't know what this would be for. So what puts it in and out of four wheel drive? This looks like it just locks and unlocks the differential. I had that when I was moving the, bl the uh, plow blade around. I hit the button and it went into neutral when I hit it. It looks like it's got a disconnect. I don't know if that's for four wheel drive. And I also see a button here, but I don't think that's for it either. There's one more down here. I think that's horn. There you go. And this is just forward and reverse, whatever gear you pick in. This is called a shuttle shift. So you pick a gear, whichever one you want, one, two, three, four. And this, this is just forward and reverse. So you put it in second, it's second gear, forward and reverse. And then it has a torque converter, just like a automatic car and it slips. It's not like you hit a clutch pedal. Down below we have split brakes. You can pull the pin on that and if you want to hit, you know, just say if you're, you got the nose up in the air and you're, say you're back dragging with the bucket and it's trying to favor it on one side, you could hit the pedal on one side and you can actually steer uh, how the tractor goes by hitting one pedal or the other. It locks up one of the two big tires in the back. That's your gas pedal or throttle pedal, I should say. And I believe this is going to be your diff lock for the back. You can lock both wheels together by pushing that one together in the back. As far as four wheel drive though, I do not know what engages and disengages that how that would work I'm, I'm kind of thinking this hey, what's that there's gonna be guys that know these machines inside and out <laughs> hey what can i tell you trial by fire right and then all the controls for the loader bucket you have float curl i think one of them is just like return back to whatever position you set it at oh well, that seems to work pretty good and for the back controls, these are your outriggers that we can't do right now. Can't touch them because they are uh, not there. <laughs> and these are just the two for the um, swing of the bucket, curl of the bucket. Uh, the pedal is for, it's called an extended boom. So that boom, you saw it move before, gets longer. So this, I think this has a dig depth of 18 feet, which is decent. It's a nice size hole. And that little bar right there, you know, it's for locking the, uh, putting in the travel mode. And I said, <laughs> I screwed up on the, I was going to leave the tractor. I didn't think it had enough hydraulic pressure to go do what it needed to do. And, uh, at the very last second, you take the stick, 
you're pulling it forward like you got the, the boom coming in and you push it forward which is totally counter uh intuitive to what you think it would do and it kind of like free floats and just the momentum of it just kind of clicks in and locks it into that travel mode now i know all right i got all the switches on see what we got we do not have any of the two center lights i don't think there's anything in the front right there's nothing in the grill no i didn't think so so i don't know if that's like high beam or low beam would be the two lights up top yeah what we got anything out back uh, just the just the four ways i guess those are brake lights be next to it and then we have none of those lights in the back that are working uh we should probably make a shopping list of what we need for it maybe we'll pick away a little bit at it but i'm gonna have to go place an order on some stuff another thing i saw too it's missing most of the fingers are missing off the bucket there's one right there and they're replaceable pop in new ones we gotta get those yeah, let's go make a list a couple things we know right off the bat. We've got to rebuild the cylinders, get them on for the outriggers. We need the teeth for the bucket. It has no mirrors. <laughs> They're smashed off of it. Uh, make the brackets for the plow. Remove the screen from the grill. And I guess maybe we can probably start looking into seeing why some of these lights don't work. So the thing is, I don't see any of those switches powering up, you know, lighting up. That one that we turned on that turned those two outside lights on, that switch lit up. I don't know where the fuse box would be in this i think that might be probably the best place to maybe go chase right away so maybe we'll get a garbage can over here we'll clean out this cab a little bit and we'll make a pile of stuff that has to go back on it and we'll get rid of uh you know that crap <laughs> we run a vacuum over it and try to find out where the fuse box is i don't have a manual for it so i'm sure that manual is probably about 250 bucks as you get the right door open if you put a piece of foam in there to stave his glass, there is nothing to hold this door open. We go get a uh, a tie strap or something. Yeah, it looks like it's missing the, the little piston that holds it. That's right, who we got. Crappy soda can. Yeah, it definitely looks like the critters are having lunch with that. Nice chain. Yeah, it looks like the bottom of the door was rotted out and he's kind of fixed it with Bondo. Fiberglass too, that's the fiberglass right there. Again, it's a work machine, not an antique car, right? Apparently he's got a block heater too. We go plug into for those cold winters. I don't know if it's got glow plugs or not. We'll look into that maybe a little bit later. Let's see what we got over here. That grill. I'm sure that was used for something. The clips and the brackets for the pistons. What do you think that was for? What did you latch with that? A couple of spray cans. rag and it's like a can of pb blaster on the other side i'm gonna hit the uh, cab with a vacuum real quick the cab's kind of cleaned out let's go get the battery box open see what we have inside there and we'll check them give a probably throw them on a charger and see what kind of condition they're in while we're playing with the lights You think one or two? I'm gonna say, looks like something has room for one. Two. It's probably a 24 volt system. See how they're tied together. Generally, a 24 volt, you'll see negative going to positive. So that's a ground. Going to ground. Yeah, so it's 12 volt. They're tied together, and the two hots are tied together. Okay, let's go, throw a, let's go throw a battery checker on and see what we get. 
Yeah, you would think they would have a hold down on them too. Looks like they're just sitting there. Yeah. It's gotta be a good when it's bouncing around, right? All right. So this will be doing both of them at the same time. And I think you count to 10 seconds. This meter's a little off. I think I talked about it once before. Somebody said you adjust the screw, I know that, but it would be, it's right for voltage. Um, so if you adjust it for uh, load, you would be off on the voltage. So it seems like it's decent. I'm gonna throw a battery charger on them and we're gonna have to come up with some kind of battery hold down. That doesn't look good unless it's part of the lid. Nah, there's nothing under the lid to hold that down. So we've got to come up with something for that. So what's your thoughts where the fuse box would be? It looks like a glove box. It's like some of the pins. These are what hold the, uh, the teeth on, on the backhoe bucket. I wonder if you, I would think it would be like up around here somewhere, right? Maybe we take the fuse box, the fuse box, the glove box out. We kind of need to get to the back of those switches anyway. And other option, maybe he's over here. Which one do you think? Let's go start with the front one. Because I don't see any other panel that comes off anywhere. I didn't see anything under the hood. Or we could cheat. Case 580 backhoe fuse location. According to Tractor Forum, the 580D has a single fuse located under the left side of the dash. That's it. One fuse for everything. It's got to have a fuse box. Box be on. You'll be on the right-hand side of the machine. If you are sitting in the seat facing forward, where the sheet metal meets the fender. Hmm. That's where D. We got pictures. <laughs> I give. All right, well, I'm going to go hunt for that. Actually, I think it's right behind that. Regular screwdriver. Who uses regular bits anymore? It's even got a little squiggly line like the center of a fuse. Go figure. Hmm. All kinds of stuff and even tells us what's, what's what. That's good. Please. I guess we could probably turn the key on, flick all the switches on, and check power across them. You could probe the back side of them. I'm going to take a minute to, to study that, though. Does that one look like it's falling out? Or melted? Or not sitting in there, right? That would be reverse relay, it says. And it looks like it's all poofed out Keep on. Yeah, the socket looks a little cooked too let's go take out the one next to it well that's gonna work out well you ever get the feeling somebody was here before us <laughs> all right before we get carried away let's go plug them back in i wonder if they're a common fuse fuse relay that looks like that yeah it looks puffy that's not a good sign Even that one's sitting a little weird too. I think they're all the same part number. Yeah, they are. Good. At least we can kind of mix and match to try to get uh, troubleshooting done. But let's go look into the fuses first. And I got all kinds of stuff powered up. Let's see if I'm looking for something that doesn't have power on one side. Power on one side, not the other. Okay, that one. Oh, there it goes. Kind of hoping we find something. Yeah, 
20 is not getting nothing, but it might have to turn something on that's not on, you know. Okay, so that 10 has nothing on it, and the 20 has nothing on, it, on those top two spots. And they would be, rear work lights is the 20, front work lights is the 10. Those are the two that we don't have any power on. I wonder if it has to go through the switches first though. I think we're gonna have to dig into the switches and see if we have power going to them. I don't know if it goes out and then through the fuse and then out. I don't know the answer to that. Let's um, real quick make sure there's no relays that work lights. Yeah, I don't see anything. Just a lot of the transmission stuff it looks like. And AC relay is not there. That would be if it has AC. Getting kind of spoiled wanting AC though, huh? All right, I guess we gotta go dig into the dash. Okay, which ones do we see? So we're not seeing, that doesn't do anything. That one's the hazards we think. And that's left and right directional. So these two work. I don't think we're getting anything on this one though. Just in case. I don't know what that would be for. Possibly the radio. Can we pop them out? And we can just kind of probe the back of them. I think we can take the glove box out too if we have to, but it looks like looks like it's barely plugged in. Yeah, let's go get the glove box out of it. We'll take a peek from the other side of it and we'll see if there's something funky going on with that. Oh sure, those are Phillips. I wonder if that one would be more like interior like because it shows the light flashing straight down. We're gonna get the glove box out though. We can go. See what we got for rodents. If there is any. I see a bunch of splices. Yeah, I can pull that plug out of there. It looks like. Yeah, let's see what the end of that looks like. It's just crosses two wires that's it but they're looking pretty cruddy what do you think maybe interior light there is one above me here then it's tapped into probably for the radio let's go grab the test light see if we get any power coming up to there Nothing, nothing. So whatever it does, it's not doing anything right now. There's another fuse. <laughs> what do we got there? Anything? Well, I guess that would be for the radio. That's all I have to mark. The only thing I have to mark it in here is a radio, right? So I got no power going to that. And that comes off of that switch there. And it goes out. So it's coming from that switch that we don't have working. Giving her. Yeah, I got nothing. The test light's still good? It looks like it. Yeah. All right, so I got no power. I wonder if we can take a jumper wire. We'll just back feed it for now, see what comes alive. Live a little, right? It's gotta have a few somewhere or lost power somewhere. Okay, so this wire right here, Test light's crowned. Test light sucks, so you can't really barely see it. You can see it powering up. So this is hot. Let's quickly backfeed that. See so anything smokes. So I would say it's this one. The radio comes on, tries to. And yeah, the radio blinks. And 
if we were to make power going on. So that, that's a dead short. Wherever that's going, it's going right to ground. So something's an issue with that, whatever that switch controls. That's why it's got no power and it blew out whatever it did. It's drawing just way too much. So what would go to that? You gotta figure out what that runs. Uh, let's take a peek at that that dome light because kind of like what it looks like, right? Where does that switch go? So the picture of the switch shows light facing straight down, right? That's the only thing I could think of. If it, because the other pictures show it, they show where the light goes. Be my guess. Like that one, I, I would probably think maybe it's the, the low beams out front. Probably gonna end up opening up this one too. Let's try to figure out where that one goes though. So it's like black and greenish yellow with the colors on it. I don't know what those are. That's brown. That's brown with something. Hey, what's this one? Oh, that's white. Looks like white and black. That's is this? No, it's not a switch. How would you turn that on and off? Would have to be that, right? What else would turn that light on? Okay, I no longer have power connected to that. And for some odd reason, the radio is now powered up by itself. <laughs> There's no switch connected to it. And the radio's on. I wonder if this switch was eh, crappy. It wasn't doing anything before, though. Well, one thing fixed itself. I don't know if it does anything. Things like this, right? You can hear like static coming out of the radio. I think she's dead. Source. Yeah, nothing even changes. Hello. Okay. There you go. Hmm. So we got the radio figured out. It fixed itself. I just kind of wonder whatever that relay was that was on there. Hey, it's not like it's a ground path neither. Yeah, it's more yellow. Say yellow and brown or yellow and black. Hard to see. Yeah, you don't, I don't have a wiring diagram for this. And they tapped into it. The other thing too, it could be a... Uh, if it was the headlights in the front, if one of them are grounded out, causing an issue. They did put their own fuse in line though. Well, I think we keep going. Let's go open this panel up and see if we have any of the stuff functioning behind here. Take a peek. Also, I want to see if we have any rodents too, you know, is the other part of it. So, because it sure smells like it. So I think we'll, we'll take, I don't know, you want to take everything? All four? Or this one? Let's go for all four. Not much room to prop you guys up in here. Something just fell out. I don't see anything instantly chomped. I don't know what that's not plugged into. I'll take a peek. Let's um and get this try to get this flipped over a little bit. We're gonna take a test light and we'll probe the back of it. See what we get. Is the only one that lights up. It's already fallen halfway out of the socket. I don't know, let's get the test light. We'll probe. 
They mount you somewhere. Yeah, I don't know how they're set up, but I think we should get power. Okay, power on that one's red. So let's just go probe these other ones real quick and see if we even got power going to these each one of these. I think it would be the red on all of them, right? Nothing. They are all in the on position too. That one got a red wire. That one's got power. This one does not. And that one does not. Let's go see if, so this one, was it this one? And that one. Okay, let's go probe the other bits of it, see if any power goes through that switch. Okay, so down is on on that one. I don't know what it works, but. Oh, that's the other side. Sometimes it's opposite, you know. Okay, nothing going out of that lead. But that one makes a circuit going through. A wiring diagram would do wonders on this one. So this one's got no power at all. Yes, it's got no power going to that switch at all. So that one's not going to do anything. Charger in a second, too. So I would think that big heavy one should have power. It's got nothing. Sometimes they're ground, too, you know? There'll be a, it makes it, it's continuing a path for ground. I wouldn't think if that was the case though, I don't think they would make the wires red, you know? Oh, we know that one works. And does this put out power to... There's nothing going out on that lead. Sometimes it also daisy chains. You have to one on for the other. Maybe that one. And that one. Okay. You know what I think this one probably is? This upper one? I was gonna say. Uh, I was gonna say all these might have been uh, just power to light the, the switch up when you turn the dash light on. You know what I mean? Like this one goes out and it illuminates the faces of them because they're all the same color. That's why I was thinking that. You know, they're all the orange and black. Hmm. I think we are not getting power. Let's um, let's live, live a little. It'll let us know really quick. <laughs> okay, that should light the light up. So that's 12 volts going to it. Let's just literally see if it arcs on us. Yeah. So it lights up. But what does it light up? Other lights. Let's go see outside if we got the lights lit up. Yep, so that's the power for the lights in the middle. And what's ever wrong with them is just power not getting to that switch. But if we figure that out, that'll make power to those. I should probably label it, but maybe you'll remember. All right, let's go do the same to the bottom one and this one, see what happens. It draws a lot of current, but... So that one is the backlights. So you gotta figure out why power is not going to that switch. That'll get our backlights working. And we gotta go figure out. This one already had power though, didn't it? The bottom one we already said had power. No, maybe? Yeah. And it was down, I think it was the on. Yeah, so that turns that one on. I don't know what it runs, 
but now it's on. All right, so we got to go figure out why why we don't have power to this wire and why we don't have power to this one. Big reds. You got to go find out where those big reds go and where they're faltering. Let's go try that front one again too. Maybe it just drew a lot of current and uh, caused it to kick out. I'll try it one more time real quick and see if we arc out on that one. No, that <laughs> that's a that's a definite short whatever that is still going to. So we got to go figure out what that one is, but we do know what the these are. So let's go chase with this for now. Try to get some of that stuff working. Well, judging by where all the heavy red leads and they're all going to be the power ones. They all seem like they go into the fuse box, and it's that harness that they go into. And they run down either to the relays or to the fuse box. I don't know if we could pull that fuse box forward a minute maybe a little bit and we can see if there's any corrosion look at all the, look at all the mouse crap down there yeah that could be an issue too huh could be just critters can we get this plastic right out of here we have to we can i wonder if there's a little bit of chewing going on down there that's screwing us up actually wasn't it those two fuses that we said it didn't have any um so rear work lights it's the 20 amp they're on and the 10 they're on no that's the outer yeah. maybe I gotta turn the switch on I think they're on which one was the <laughs> let's just pick away see if anything else works up they all should have 12 volts to them anyway, so we're not going to hurt anything if we cross them. So we got to figure out why those two circuits don't have any power. So it's going to be these two. That one, which is the rear lights, and that one. These are both. Wait a minute. That did the rear. Both of those are doing the rear. It's supposed to be the 20 supposed to be the rear and the 10 supposed to be the front. Hmm. Well, the fact that that one's blown. That one's not. But we should have probed that and got power on one side when we were testing earlier. Hopefully, I got some of those little fuses. Go get rid of the test light. Yeah, we should have power on one side of that, and we don't. Yeah. All right. We go see guy and dig up some fuses anyway. Newbies. You know they're junk. It's not gonna do anything. I might as well replace that twenty-two. I don't see it being bad, but. still don't have power going to, I wonder if it's supposed to go through a relay and that's something that I could think of is like a relay would turn on like when you turn the key on and then the ignition would allow the circuits to come alive and judging by that one that's all puffy it's kind of a steering us in that direction I can give a quick loose uh, rear light relay either that one Power relay relay. Let's go see if we can get that out of there. Isn't that the one that the top came off on us? Put the light. On. Yeah. Well, let's just click it by hand. <laughs> Not saying that that relay's not any good, right? We're just firing it by hand. Let's so get that fuse box to come away. Let's 
So what is that cooked looking mess right there? Look like it's burnt to you. That might be an issue. I think that's like a fusible link. I've got another one cooked right next to it. Let's see if we can stab that. See if we get any power on one side. like hell about it, doesn't it? I'm sure it's not helping things. I wish we could get a little bit more slack out of it. it definitely looks like something cooked there though. I think we're gonna dig that away because whatever that is, it's not right. I think the two wires meet? We have two wires meeting right there. Yeah, that's some kind of connector of some sort. And if one of those have power. Come on, something light up. That would explain why nothing works, right? I think we should probably disconnect the battery batteries. Where's that go? <laughs> and uh, kind of pick at this a little bit. I have a feeling that this, the fact that it's all cooked and melted like that, is definitely going to be giving some of an issue. And that goes to, we're concerned about these two fuses right here, which is, that's one of them. These two circuits are running off of that lead right there. That's the power probably coming in. And I wonder if it cooks something behind it. But that's our issue right there. Whatever's going on with... The front lights just came on. All the lights just came on. lights are on <laughs> and all the lights are on I think we found where the problem is good I'm gonna go disconnect the battery and we're gonna have to go try to figure out what's happening inside there and repair that all right I can kind of tug around a little bit more we're not trying to worry about setting everything on fire let's go cut some of this crap out of here whatever that big junction box is See what we got to work with. You gotta figure there's a lot of current going through there. You got how many? Eight? Eight fog lights? No idea what it did, right? We found it. thing is is that that's not one of those stupid um you kind of those little spades that you slide across to to join power together that would be dumb that's exactly what it is i wonder why it burned out especially for that much current that's like something you put on for like they come with the stereos so I bet you one of those circuits crapped out. Somebody said, oh, we'll just sister them together. Then it burned both of them out. Need something to divide them. They're like, glued together. There we go. So it's that one and that one. But the thing is, is one of them still crapped out though? You know? It's gonna have way too much resistance going across them. I 
I wonder if there's a way we can kind of open this harness up and give a little bit more work room. I think I peeked down inside. Literally two screws took that whole cover off. Knowing that, I would have done that a while ago. Yeah, I think I had, somebody was living there. Let's take a quick peek, see if you see another funky wiring. It's like a big junction box right here. But at least now we can access this mess a little bit. Yeah, we can go. Probably should just cut them back. We'll just cut those right out of there and splice it back together with a big connector. That's probably the one that's broken in half right there. Yeah, those those things suck. They, they come with like trailer kits too. And what it does is it, it takes all the wires. It, it like a spade. It comes in between the wire. And then it just it cuts all the strands off. I'm sure that's what's happening with that right there too. All right, I'm gonna go chop them. And uh, you know, those are the two colors that we saw up top by the switches not having power to. And uh, repair them and try it again. So I dug some of that crap out of there. And hit it with a test light. This one has power on it. This one does not. What's weird is when I look at these circuits, there's only a leg on one side. There's not a leg on both sides. I really don't understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's a wire going on this side, but nothing on this side. And what they had, but they had them jump together. So that connector was just bridging these two. I'll show you. Come across and we'll bridge it. And it turns the lights on. And it's just too much resistance with going across that. And it cooked everything. That almost looked like a... Do you think that was done at the factory? Because I, I don't see... If you look at the back there, you see what I'm talking about. You see like it has every other one. I stole power from this one. So without digging in such a huge hole, I think I'm going to try to come up with something that bridges both of them together, but is done, you know, <laughs> something that's got the gauge of these two wires, tying them together. Fire, fire up a soldering iron, tie them together, and then that take like some liquid electrical tape. Maybe we'll go over it. Well, until I hunt down a wiring diagram, I'm going to go with that. I'm not convinced that's great. The rear lights, I do not believe, are on a fused circuit. I think they are just got jumped across to put power to them. I think somebody disconnected some wires. If you pull these, this blue thing here, you'll be able to pull the pins out of it. I think somebody did that and moved some stuff around. Anyway, I soldered them together. It's not a high resistive joint anymore. And then I just came over with um, uh, liquid tape and goobered it over the top. I'm gonna let that set up overnight, leave it alone. And like I said, I think one of these relays are probably just not functioning correctly and it was not sending power down to there, but for now I'm gonna leave it. All the lights work, um, just the rear circuit. I'm a little concerned it's possibly not fused. What I might do if I can't figure it out, I'm just gonna open up the wire that goes to the rear circuit and put an inline fuse inside it over there and then it, it will be fused, just won't be you know, as easily accessed as the other ones, so. Well guys, I think it's going to be about it on this one. I got just a kind of a quick rundown on what's what and, you know, chasing a couple of things that need to be addressed and made our shop a list. So the next video will be uh, getting those pieces in. Hopefully they all come in. I'm going to drop the hydraulic cylinders off, get them rebuilt. I'm not going to bother screwing with them. Like I said, they need, uh, they need some more love than just putting seals in. They have damage to the actual pistons themselves. And I think they can repair them. They're not too bad. I think they braze in some material. Uh, clean them up and then replate them. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure. And they're expensive anyway. I think they're, if you go to replace them, I think they're 1200 bucks a piece. So everything else seems to be decent. I haven't figured out what turns on and off four wheel drive. I don't know if four wheel drive turns on and off. If it is just like on all the time, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I figure once we get the outriggers on it, we can lift the bucket in the front and lift the tires off in the back. And we just fire it up and, you know, put it in gear and see what does what. My guess, if it does turn on and off, it's either that one switch that we were screwing with up here. I don't know if it's that, but that had that light thing on it. That weird picture of a light, you know. So, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, dash light. That might be, I'm guessing it's that up there. And then the other two for four-wheel drive, my opinion would be, 
either this, but I think this just kind of puts it in uh, everything in neutral real quick, the button there, and or this guy does it. Again, I just don't know what the what runs what. But that's what the comment section's for, right? So anybody that owns the 95, a lot of the earlier ones had a shifter next to the seat. You put it in and out, but there's nothing there. I don't see anything. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> so I'm gonna educate you also. What works the rear wiper? I don't know. It doesn't operate on the front circuit. Maybe it's that bottom switch that we didn't figure out what it worked. Again, maybe if somebody get the comments on that one for me. But for this one, I think we're done. Get her.